Hello and welcome to part two in our enemy wave based game mode. In the first part we set up our enemies and their spawners and in this episode we're going to go through the game mode and set up all the functionality for spawning enemies in per the round. So let's get started. So last time we were here we built our spawners and our basic enemy and got them moving around and we're now going to start working on our game mode where the most of the work is going to be happening. So in the last time in the game mode, we set up some basic things. We need to get started. We've got some variables and we've got some functions. The first function we're going to work on is the start wave function. Now, the purpose of start wave is to first of all, collect up what enemies it should be spawning and then working out how many it should spawn in at any one time. So on the start wave here, we need to build a function called build enemy pool. This is going to work out what enemies should be included in the pool of our spawner. So I'm going to go to the functions and uh, to variable, sorry, and create a new one called enemy pool. And this will be a map with the variable type key being enemy class, which is the purple node, and a, a green integer. The integer represents how many of that class are going to be included in that pool. Alongside the functionality of adding what you want to be in that pool, we're first of all just going to start off by just dragging out our enemy pool and getting our enemy pool size. Now to work out the size of enemy pool, we need to calculate all the different values and add them all up. So what we're going to do is drag this out and top out values. And for each one of these, we can add them all up. So we're going to have a local variable. This will be the local sum. We'll change that to a single uh, integer. And all we're doing is taking the array element and adding them to the local sum. So local sum starts at zero. And when you add the next one to it, it will just get higher and higher and higher until it finishes the loop. And so back to local sum. So it goes through adding them all up and works out what the finished product is on completed here. We'll set the enemy count uh, to, uh, sorry, um, let's change enemy killed here to enemy remaining. Enemy remaining. And we'll set that here. That'll be set to local sum. Okay, so it builds enemy pool up. We now calculated how many we've got left to kill. So that's the first part. The second part of the start wave is, well, let's put that in first. The second part of the uh, wave is to uh, work out how many we want to spawn at any one time. So normally in a wave mode, you don't want enemies to keep spawning in endlessly. Usually you want to cap it at a certain point and then start spawning more in. So we're going to go to our um, enemy uh, pool. And I'm going to work out the size of the pool. Actually, what I'm going to do is if I go to that build enemy pool here and take this, all this stuff here. Actually, just uh, this stuff like that. I'm going to right click on this and collapse that to a function. And this will be get pool size. And if I make that a pure function, open it up. And I'm completed, I'm going to make it output the local sum. Uh, local sum we have to promote to local variable like that and then drag that out and plug that in and the reason why i'm doing that is um we go uh, sum here. um the reason why i'm doing this is because then i can use the same function to calculate how many i should have in this first round at any way i want so on this build pool size i can just go to that local sum there and just do set enemy remaining to get pool size and I can now get rid of that local variable there. So put enemy pool, we'll get the pool size and output it to enemy remaining. Back on the start wave, we're going to take our, our uh, get pool size and we're going to do our enemy wave, enemy count, which is our max count. Uh, let me rename that to make it a bit clearer. Enemy max count. So that's how many enemies can be existing at any one moment in the wave at any one time. And that could uh, increase as the difficulty goes up or as the number of waves goes up but um, for now if I said like 
enemy max count of five, that means at any one moment in time, there's only going to be a maximum of five enemies in the, in the list. Now, the pool size and the max count are going to go through a for loop to calculate how many enemies it should spawn in right away. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, do a min node to work out which one of these is the smaller value. So if the pool size is, say, um, 10, and enemy max count is uh, 5, it will spawn it f 5 times. Okay, it will spawn 5 things. Yeah, it will just get around that loop and, and stop. Okay. So on the min there, they'll go to a for loop. And that will be... Uh, this be subtracting 1 from it. Like so. Okay. So because we'd subtract one from it because the first is the zero. And these are getting the sizes, which is not going to be zero based. They're like start one. So on this loop body, we now want to get a random spawner and tell them to add an enemy to their queue. So I'm going to take our spawners out. And I'm going to do random ray item. And I'm going to do add enemy to queue. Now, the enemy class we're going to pass through here is going to come from our enemy pool. Um, we can make a function in here. I'm going to do get enemy from pool. And that's going to output a enemy class. And we'll just call that enemy. And we'll just hard code that into just enemy, first of all. We'll come back to this later on in the series. Let's go back to our start fee there. And we're going to put in get any from pool and put that in. And this could be pure as well, but let's just put it in the loop body here. Like so. So get any from pool, add it to a random spawner, and away you go. Okay, so that's the end of our start wave. We're going to end it there. And then we're going to create another function called new wave. And the purpose of new wave is to kickstart the whole thing off. The new wave is going to take the wave number and add one to it by incrementing it by one. And then we're going to call start wave. And if I go to the event graph on begin play, I can now just drag out new wave. So I can call new wave whenever I want. I might be doing it on begin play, but this also be happened on a button push or a UI push. Anything like that, we just call this new wave on our game mode. Now it'll kick start the whole thing off. So, new wave will trigger, we increase the wave number from zero to one, start wave, we'll get the amount of enemies it needs to spawn in, go through the loop where everyone's smaller, and spawn the amount of enemies it needs to have in any one time. So, alongside the new wave, before we do that, we also want to get the spawners. So, let's drag in our get spawners function we made last time. And that's just going to go and get collect up all the spawners that are valid for this round. And it'll go through there. Now we also want to set up our variables here. So wave number should start at zero. Max count will start at five. Enemies remaining, we can see leave at zero. Enemy pool, we're going to put in one element and that's going to be enemy set to 10. So 10 enemies in the first round. So you now if I hit play, we can see one, two, three enemies spawning in. Now they're not moving. And the reason why they're not moving is because I forgot to change on the enemy class in class defaults search for ai controller uh, not controller sorry um it's, sorry just has been possess there we go and you go auto possess ai it, it by default be placed in world change that to placed in world or spawned okay now we can play this so here we got one two three enemies spawning now there should be more spawning it should be at least five up at any one time um, or whatever's left of the pool. But as you can see here, we've only got three. And the reason why this is happening is because on our spawner, I made an error. And I a spawn enemy. On a spawn enemy, we do this set timer by function name. The problem with this is that this timer is meant to have 
no parameters, no signature. Okay, we can't give it a signature, we can't determine it. It has no signature on it whatsoever. But the one we've got here, spawn enemy, does have a signature. It has this output for success. So timers won't work in this instance. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to compile that and remove the timer. Then on the event graph, we're going to go to begin play. And we can do a, um, I'll tell you what we can do. Yeah, no, no, we'll do it here. Set timer by uh, event. Oh, try that again. Set timer by event. And we'll set that to two seconds on begin play. Looping. And the event come down here. Custom event. Try to spawn. And what that's going to do is just going to call that spawn enemy uh, function there. And that's all it's going to do on a loop the whole entire game. An alternative method we could also do is we can do one when an enemy overlaps a set thing, it will check to see if it can spawn another one in. So it ends it overlap. So when an enemy walks away from it, it will try and spawn another one in. You could do either. Um, the, uh, over, uh, the, the impact of having a timer like this is negligible. You're not going to notice it. So what we're going to see now is one, two, three, four, five. And it should be only ever five at any one time spawned in. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So what we've got to do next time is we have to make it so that we can uh, kill these ones and then spawn in the rest of the pool. Because at the moment there's ten in the pool and we've only got five. So we're going to go through that next time. So there you go. We've now got enemies spawning in. Now the next half of the equation is for defeating these enemies and removing them and keeping track of which ones we've removed, spawning in new ones, and if needed, go to the next wave. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month as well as many other benefits too like the creator challenge and polls. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.